Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Nev's Garage. Now, if this is your first time joining us here on our channel, make sure you hit that old subscribe button and also toggle on the little bell. That way you'll be notified when our next video comes out. Don't get too excited about the next video yet though, because it's not even ready. This one is, so let's watch it. Today, I'm gonna be taking a look at this Fisher & Paykel direct drive washing machine. Now, this unit's about 17 years old. She's had a really good run. These bad boys have got a pretty bad reputation because they give uh, apparently troubles with the electronics. Well, I must have got the only good one in the universe because this one's never ever missed a beat. Um, it does, however, now have an issue. When it's going, it's, uh, it's very noisy. I'll show you what I mean. Right, you hear that? Sounds terrible, she's cactus I reckon, so. Let's pull it apart, see what's wrong inside, and um, we'll fix her up as good as new. Come on guys. All right guys, so first of all, let's disconnect everything. And then we're just gonna take it out of its nook. All right, so now we're just gonna lay it down on its back. All right, so let's just undo the main hub nut here. Okay, let's got him off. All right, now we'll undo these four nuts and take this coil off. I think we'll mark a few of these things while we're at it. So we can put it all back together. Now we're just going to lift this off. Hopefully. Like that. Boom. Off she comes. Let's just mark where these wires go. Yellow. Blue. Red. And we'll take them off. Now this sensor. We unclip this little plastic clip here. sensor should just pull off. So let's mark where he goes. And we'll just tuck him down there out of the way. Alright, so uh, there we go. Let's put a stator on the bench. Alright, so now we want to undo this nut. Now, what we'll do Because this drum has the spline in it, I'll try and use that to crack that loose, I think. Alright, so we've got a 32mm spanner. We'll just slip it under there and push the spline on a little. I have to use the open end so it's not offset. it loose. Cool. 
Cool. That's the nut. And now I reckon that the drum will come out. How about we give it a bit of gentle persuasion? I'm using a nylon hammer, so it's not going to mess up the shaft. And a bit of Lanox for lubricant. There's always time for lube. All right, we're just going to whip around the other side for a minute. Okay, so it looks like we need to remove the agitator. So just reach your arm down inside, undo the little wing nut. Then it'll come off and just show it a bit of tough love to get it out. That's it. Now we can see the bottom of our drum. All right, let's take off those three Phillips screws. Take that housing off. Get him back on his feet. So I think what we're going to do now is get the actual drum out. So we're going to have to take the top off the machine. So, so I reckon there'll be, yep, a screw under there. And a screw under there. Okay, now, I think we... now to get the drum out, we're going to take this silly surround off. So, so just go around the outside, pull the clips out. Like that. And now, got to hold this because the wiring's still connected, okay? I don't want to take the top off. And lift, and out comes the drum. Just going to sit that back on there for now. Let's... Okay, so let's just sit this back in there for now. And we'll set the top back on. And let's lay it back down see what we're working with. All right, so there's one bearing and you can see the other one down in there. Give you guys a closer look. You can see the bearing in the bottom. You can see a crush tube down in the middle. And then at the other end, another bearing. Alright, so let's um, let's knock them out. So we're just going to get a long screwdriver and our nylon hammer again. And just going to push that crush tube to the side. And just stick it through on the bottom of our top bearing and... Take turns which side we attack.
Okay, just had a plop, so that's our top seal. And there's our bearing out. Okay, seal, bearing. And then if we do the same to the bottom, I can take our crush tube out now. Out she comes. That was pretty easy. So, there we go there. Top bearing's the culprit. She's real notchy. Um, so it's just because the seal has let go. Right, so there we go, bottom, top, seal. Bottom bearing, still good. Yeah, top bearing is the noisy one. It's all dry. All right, let's give them a clean up, see if we can get some numbers. Okay, so, all right, so our bearings are easy. Because they're just a 6005 C3 clearance. They're both the same, so they'll be simple to get. Our seal doesn't have any part numbers on it, but it is an NOK seal, so we should be able to get it. It does have sizes on it, 25, 48, and then 15 and 22 referring to the double widths because it's stepped so it's 15 and then 22. So right, any good auto parts store should be able to help us with these so off we go try and get them. All right so here's our old bits, two bearings, one seal, crush tube. Here's our new bits, two bearings, three seals. Now why is there three seals compared to one seal? Well these are just a generic bearing, right? A 6005. Get them in any good auto parts shop. Now this seal is a kind of a special seal to suit the Fisher and Pike all right? You can get them, but if you're doing a job on the weekend, you're probably not going to be able to source it same day. So what I've done is got three seals and these are going to do a much better job than this seal anyway. I'll show you why. The original seal is a one two, three lip, right? Now, these three seals are going to be a one, two, three, four, five, six lip. Six lips are better than three lips. That's just science. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so we're going to put the bottom bearing in first. So just open him up. Okay, and just going to pop him straight in here. Now we don't want to hit him on the center race and damage it, so just going to start him in with a hammer like this. Okay, and then I'm going to get a, a die and put it in with the rest. All right, so that's all the way in on its landing. Okay, so now let's put the top bearing in. All right, so first of all is our crush tube. Straight down the middle there. Boom, like that. We can line him up later. Now our next new bearing. This is the top bearing. They're both the same, by the way, so it doesn't matter which one you put in which spot. Straight down the hole. Now we'll use our die again to put him in. Alright, I think that's home. Okay, now we have to put the shaft through. The reason being because there's a lip here on the shaft that sits against the top bearing, so we can't push it through the seals. Okay, so in she goes. 
make sure you get the right way around. There she is. Beautiful. Now the seal. So the bottom one will be the 25.47.7. In she goes. Alright, so now the second seal. second one's home and now the top one and down she goes before we push it all the way down I'm just going to put a bit of Lennox on the shaft this is to lubricate it and the other seals so they don't run dry push it in as well. All right, cool, all the seals are in. Uh, so we can assemble the rest of the top now and then tip it back on its back and finish it off. Okay, so in goes the drum. Lower it down onto the shaft, boom, like that. Now we can clip the top back on. You'll notice it's a lot cleaner now. So I give it a bit of a jet wash while she was apart. Okay, now we put this top plate down on the drum down there like that now we can uh, just put the lid back down there like that now we've got our three Phillips screws that holds that down. So I'll just get them started. Like that. And we'll just drive them in. It's only in a plastic, so I don't over torque them. Check it by hand. Yep, lovely. Now our agitator can go in. It just sits down on the spline and then the wing nut goes down the top. that lovely now we can secure the top back on just go around and push it down which it pretty much is seems to be back in place so we've got two screws for that 
throw them down the hole and draw them in. Torque them up by hand. Lovely. Put the covers back on. Starting to look like a washing machine again. All right, so the next step is the bottom nut. So just uh, give it a bit of a lube up. All right, and on she goes. Now remember we used the bottom cap to hold the shaft while we undid the nut, so we're gonna do the same to do it up. Give that another go just to make sure she's talked up. Yep, she's good. All right, so the next thing is the coil. All right, so we better plug it all up first. Sits down in there and locks in place. I'm going to call that the crank angle sensor. And we plug these three back on. Yellow, blue, and red. Okay. And Sit him on there. Like that. Okay, they're wiring into there. Yep. There we go. Cool. Now our bottom plate goes on like that. And our four bolts. We are, of course, going to lube these holes up a bit. I'm just going to torque them up by hand. Okay, that's the coil back on. All right, it's over the bottom hub. Now just seat it on the spline and screw it on like this. And I'm just gonna nip them up by hand. Like that. It's not one of these washing machines last well because they're so simple and they're built amazingly well. Direct drive motor straight on the bottom of the shaft. So not many moving parts to mess up. I like it. All right, so uh, that's it. She's back together. Let's flip it back up, hook some water up to it and give it a burn.
All right, guys, so it's all connected back up now, and now she's spinning up to speed. We'll see how it sounds. How good's that? I'll put my ladder a little bit closer so you can hear it properly. So much better, eh? Alright guys, well I guess that's it for this episode of Nev's Garage. Uh, thank you as always for liking, sharing and subscribing. And uh, also, make sure you jump on our Instagram, at Gosson Media, that's our handle. And you'll be able to see some behind the scenes shots and little sneak peeks and uh, hopefully some spoilers. So um, that's it from me. Thanks for tuning into Nev's Garage. Bye.